You do a lot of things, TV host, author, entrepreneur. You're also a uh, decorated Army veteran having served in Afghanistan and a very strong voice for veterans coming home. What is your core message as you speak at this event in Wichita honoring Kansas veterans? You know, I think there's, there's really two major messages that I want to uh, that I want to uh, share. One is that the support that veterans receive is not just good for when they first come back home. You know, oftentimes they think when a person comes back home, it's like, oh, you know, well, I'm glad that's over, uh, and let's give them some support to help them reintegrate and then get them back to normal. Uh, the reality is, is that for every single one of us, there's not going to be a, a return a return to normal. There's going to be a new normal. And that new normal is something that doesn't just happen over the first week that we come back home or the first month. It's something that is going to continue to go on. And as a society, we have to be prepared for that and have to be able to support it. The second thing is, I think we have to remember the families in all of this. You know, oftentimes, and, and I, didn't, I learned this from a very personal place, was I thought we had it toughest as the ones who were serving overseas. Um, you know, we had good days and we had some very bad days. Uh, but we always had each other while we were overseas fighting and serving. Uh, the families don't. And oftentimes, and I realize even with my own experiences, the families in many ways have it tougher than we do because they're just the ones who are sitting there and hoping that no one shows up to their door in a uniform. The ones who are watching the news and, and, and hoping that they never see their loved one's name being flashed across the screen. Uh, that's really hard and really difficult. So as we're going through this process on Veterans Day and beyond, thinking about how do we support veterans, I want to make sure that we're not forgetting to support the families as well in this process. You know, I invited all of the veterans that we interviewed for our Veterans Coming Home pieces to this special Veterans Day event, and what struck me was the enthusiasm nearly all of them had for attending. Now, what do you attribute that to? I'm sure they want to hear you talk, but does it go beyond that? Oh, it, it goes well beyond that. Um, it's a sense of camaraderie. Uh, it's a sense of belonging. Uh, you know, I, I was, I've been excited, I mean, had this date circled on my calendar because I just love getting around vets, talking about our experiences, knowing that you can have a conversation without pretext. Uh, you know, all these kind of things that we miss, uh, you know, when you come back home uh, that I think you get a chance to relive and you get a chance to absorb when you get around a collection of vets. So I can, I, I, I sense the excitement even as I first, you know, came in here. Uh, and I know what it really has to do with. It has to do with the idea of just being around brothers and sisters who get it. Well, tell me, how much do veterans of your generation connect with the older vets, say, from World War II, Korea, and Vietnam? Well, I think, I think the debt of gratitude that, that you know, the Iraq and Afghanistan vets have for veterans of World War II, Korea, Vietnam, et cetera, is huge because our reception has been so different, and we know that so much of it is because of them. Uh, you know, we're doing a lot of work right now with Vietnam veterans and just really, because we really want to give them the proper thank you that they never received when they came back home. Uh, our reception back home has been very different where we have people, even if you were completely disagreement with, with the war, you respect the warriors. You respect the ones who went overseas and fought and served because our nation asked them to. And so much of that was because veterans of other foreign wars have made sure that was the case, have made sure that we were treated differently than the way that they were treated. So I think you've seen a real sense of camaraderie amongst veterans of foreign wars, regardless of the generation, regardless of the decade, regardless of the conflict, um, because I think there's a real sense of reliance and a real sense of thanks for the things that they've done for us. What is the most important thing you would like the rest of us to understand about veterans coming home and veterans who've been home for some time? I think the most important thing I want people to understand is, is that we want to talk about our experiences. You know, oftentimes people think that, you know, I don't want to ask the wrong thing. I don't want to say the wrong thing. I don't want to offend. So therefore, oftentimes when you don't want to offend, the default answer becomes, then I'll just say nothing. Uh, I'll say thank you for your service and then we'll move on to talking about something else. Um, we want to talk about our experiences. We want to talk about the good times. We want to talk about our experiences with our soldiers and our sailors and our airmen and our, and our Marines. We want to talk about what the food was like over there, how hot it was over there, how cold it was over there. Whatever the case is, we just don't want people to forget uh, that the experiences that we had overseas were not just formidable, but they're our foundation. 
Uh, and so that's the thing I think that most vets want people to understand and want people to get. Uh, ask us about our experiences because we're more than happy to share. Wes Moore, thanks a lot. It's my pleasure. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thank you. Yeah.